Thank you, Majoti, for joining us. Really appreciate that. And I just want to begin by, um, if you could tell us just a little bit about yourself. I've lived in Denver, Colorado for uh, enough years to say that I'm a native. And uh, for that time, around 28, 30 years, I ran a yoga-based preschool uh, in Denver. And I like to hike and be in nature and raise cats and teach yoga. <laughs> Fantastic. You taught, you've been one of my teachers teaching me about how to teach young children yoga. And what a fantastic class that was. I really appreciated that class. Thank you. So thank you very much for again for joining us. So today we're going to be talking about Santosha, which also could be put into words of contentment. I would love you to start out by just, could you, how would you define Santosha and contentment in your life? Um, you know, contentment is one of those things that we all have. It's like we all also have the supreme embedded in our hearts. Contentment is um, a chapter of bliss, is a chapter of self-realization. So there's always a piece of contentment inside. And so we just have to nurture and feed that and mature that and keep it going. Everybody, like so many things in life, everybody has a different quantity. Like for some people, it's easy for them to stay content. But for other people, it's like really challenging to maintain that uh, state of contentment. And so we all have to develop our own plans on how we're going to maintain and nurture that contentment that each of us carry. And so contentment is something that we may always have a little bit of, or we may have more than uh, a bit. Depends on what size your helping is. Yes, that's a great way of describing it. And could you describe a moment when you truly felt content and at peace in your life? You know, it's interesting because the times when I look back at him and I thought, oh, that brought me a lot of contentment. I was anxious during the whole thing. It was very difficult. Like when I had you in that class, I was terrified during that class. But on the other hand, I loved that class. And it gave me a great sense of contentment to teach a class like that. So sometimes when you have a, a fulfillment of your cup of contentment, it's, it's not all bliss and sweetness and the sun is shining. Sometimes it's very challenging. And it's, it's when you're in it and then you come at it and you go, you know, uh, but it, it can give you contentment all the same. I think that's an important point you just brought up. So sometimes you can have that anxiety or you can be facing a challenge before you achieve that contentment. How do you overcome that? You know, since I've been retired, I've been asked to do all kinds of things that I've never done before, like this interview. <laughs> and so when those things come up on my plate, it's like, I've never done that before. I can't do that. Uh, but on the other hand, I realized that I came, I came onto this planet with all those things inside. They're all there. I just need to excavate them up, you know, bring them to the surface. And so I've always been a very firm believer that the Supreme gives you everything that you need. I mean, it's in my mind and in my heart without question. Uh, when I was very young, I came upon the realization that I don't need to pray for things. You know, it came to me very young when I was little. I don't need to pray. I don't need to ask for things. The Supreme has given me everything I need for this journey. And so that realization came on me very early in life. So sometimes when I'm faced with a new challenge, I will pretend that I can do it until I can. I overcome, I like override. I do a, an override over all the fear, the doubt, the anxiety of all that. And then I just 
I can do this. I can do this. It doesn't matter that I can't remember that I did this a million times last life. I'm going to get up and do it now. And then I get up and I do it. So that's how I override my challenging uh, fears and doubts. I just fake it till you make it, make it till you bake it. One of those things. <laughs> I think it's fake it till you make it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, so you're saying you kind of have like a internal personal conversation with yourself? Is that what you're... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I set all my personalities in a circle. So I sit down with all my girls and we have a talk about it. And so I usually talk them all into it. I love that. Like just that visualization. I thought was sometimes I have a conversation with myself in the mirror and I said, all right, ego, <laughs> we like need that. to check ourselves right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we all need a plan like that. You know, it's, it's like so many things in life that sometimes we assume, oh yeah, I can do this, but you have to have a plan. You know, you have to have some affirmations or self-talk or that mantra. Um, you know, you need to have a lot of things in your toolkit to really pull that off. And you have to self-coach. And at the same time, you wanna leave um, some spaciousness in your mind and heart so that that inner sliver of the divine can float to the surface and you can grab that. And so you don't want to occupy your whole being with talk and chatter, and but somehow have some spaciousness in that so that when the divine decides to surface, you can be there. So what are some um, practices or activities that bring the most contentment? into your life, contentment in your life? You know, teaching, whether it's children, adults, or seniors, I love teaching, even though it causes me a tremendous amount of anxiety. <laughs> and, um, but I have this, I have this helping of self-confidence that helps me, you know, cheer through it. Uh, so I love teaching, it challenges me, and I like that challenge. Usually a lot of supreme ideas, bubble up to the surface uh, while I'm teaching, which I'm very, very thankful for. And I, I think that's um, mm, another way of dealing with Santosh when you feel like your helping is a little bit smaller than you would like to have is uh, looking at the things that you do have, looking at and appreciating, oh, but look, I've got this and I've got that. And I don't know, I know I don't have this up here yet, but I've got this, I've got that. So being grateful for what is there is key, is important. And, and that gives you some satisfaction. That gives you some mm, contentment. Yeah, so valuable to be, yeah. You've kind of already touched on this, but in your opinion, is contentment a state of mind or is it tied to external circumstances? I saw this video two days ago of uh, this big black bear scratching her back on a tree. She was going up and down and her nose was pointed up and she was so blissed out. You know, how can we get that in our lives? How can we hold on to that? What was the question again? I, the question was, that in, in your opinion, is contentment a state of mind or is it tied to external circumstances? So definitely, it's, it's, it's attached to that tree. And the tree helped her to achieve that sense of happiness is probably what she had and some contentment. And then she went on with her life. But she's always longing for the tree. You know, and so we've all got to find our tree um, that's going to help us bring that contentment. Like, I can't be content just sitting here. I need to be out there and doing something and teaching people. So there's definitely that external uh, part to it. But then I also know people who have meditated for many, many years, and they find a lot of contentment in just sitting and meditating. I haven't discovered that yet. But what I have discovered is I love doing service. I just can't do enough service, you know, to make a difference in somebody's life or in another living entity's life. I mean, that gives me so much contentment. 
and really makes my heart sore. If um, I didn't have that external place where I could go and, can I help you do that? What can I do to help? Um, I would be a vegetable. And so I, I think for me, at least, and maybe some people are different, for me, I, it's both. I thought something that you brought up was really important too, is that you're saying that contentment, it's, that you're pointing out contentment is gonna be different for each one of us, that we're gonna find it in different places when you brought up the thing about you find contentment in offering service, others will find it in the meditation practice. When did when did you come to realize that you know that you found contentment in things like service and stuff like that? Was there like an aha moment, or was it something that gradually occurred? And how did like you know do you can you pinpoint something where that change started to occur? I got upset one day. I didn't feel like the people in my spiritual community were doing enough to make a difference in the world. Actually aggravated me quite a bit. So I, I just went out and organized things. You know, we would fix peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and take them to the uh, homeless. You know, then we would bring fruit as well. And then we would bring water too. And just seeing how mm, appreciative they were you know, how it just put this big smile on these faces, these people who live uh, quite a bit more challenging life than me. It just, it just made my heart sing so much that it's like, I can't stop doing this. <laughs> I can't stop. You know, I mean, for everyone to experience that contentment or even temporary uh, happiness, just became such a value to me that uh, to this day, even though I'm retired, I'm always looking for ways to um, alleviate the suffering of others. Um, when I see other people in pain, I'm, I'm in pain. You know, it's just the homeless population of this country is going through such a difficult time that I just can't sit on my couch and watch TV and feed my cats without sticking my finger in it. You know, how can I be a part of that change? And I think it's Gandhi who said, uh, be the change that you wish to see in the world. That's my mantra. <laughs> be, be that. You know, I, I have people I know who just, oh, they love to whine. It's neener, 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 neener. And uh, I can't do that without doing something about it. It's like the call to action. I get drafted by God. Speaking of contentment, do you see that there's a difference between contentment and like happiness or satisfaction? You know, happiness is just so relative. It goes up and down, up and down. It's very systaltic. Happiness is here and then it's gone. Contentment. There's a piece of contentment that can always be with you. Like someone who is even keeled um, is someone who like if you were a boat and you're even keeled, you're not gonna fall over. And so contentment is something that keeps you uh, even keeled, uh, keeps your mind in that state of equanimity. And I think is always with us, whereas happiness is just here, here today, gone tomorrow. But contentment is something that we can call up at any time from that inner core of our being. And we can always strive to water it more and to feed it more uh, so that uh, that feeling grows within us. Sometimes when we don't experience contentment, it's because we've made that fatal human error of comparing ourselves with others, which right away can produce a feeling of discontent. So we wanna distance ourselves um, from those thoughts, uh, from those feelings that are going to maybe um, nurture discontent uh, as opposed to contentment. Uh, there was uh, a native, old Native American story about this black wolf and the white wolf and how they're always fighting each other. And this is the battle between good thoughts and bad thoughts. 
and uh, this Indian chief was telling his son the story and the, the child asked, well, which one won? Which one won the struggle? And it's the one you feed the most. And so for contentment, you want to feed that part of yourself, uh, which, which is content. And, and then again, we do that by being grateful for what is there, um, being grateful for noticing that if we really need something, it will come. And if it's not coming, maybe we're going, uh, we're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe we just need to um, change our course and try another way or try some other road to what we're working on. Because um, it's hard to find out where you're supposed to be sometimes in life. So sometimes when we experience feelings of discontent, it's just because we haven't found the way. Thomas Jefferson once said, it's not that I've failed to make a light bulb work for 10,000 trials. It's just that I haven't found the right way yet to do that. So he didn't feel that him going through 10,000 experiments were failure, but that he hadn't found the right way to do it yet. So sometimes when we're feeling uh, like we're being taken hostage by discontent, it's more that we haven't found the right way yet. Is there a time that you are an experience you can share that, that you felt like maybe you were being taken hostage by that discontent and you were able to navigate yourself back to that contentment or something that you learned? For example, uh, if I feel like things aren't going as well as maybe they should, and I, so I'm shooting on myself, I actually chant mantra quite a bit to keep my head on the right channel and not to give up but just to find uh, another way to do something. I think if you chant, even just two or three minutes, it helps to uplift the mind so that you can find another way. You can find another current. You can find another stream that will take you the longer distance. So, you know, singing Baba Nam Kebalam, that universal mantra, man, that takes me the distance. That was going to be my next question. So let's say we have somebody um, that is struggling finding that contentment. And you talked a little bit about that, about different ways. But is there, is there, do you have some like technique advice, you know, what you just said about using Bob and Om Kevalam that you could say here, there's some tools or some steps that maybe you can take to find, to get in touch with that contentment within your life? You know, a lot of things that we're talking about are characteristics of Shaucha, which is the one, the stepping stone before Santosh. And one of the critical things in Shaucha is cleaning your thoughts, uh, brainwashing. <laughs> How do we redirect the mind? And um, so cleaning those thoughts and finding activities that help. Um, and again, this might be different for everyone, you know, what kinds of activities or things that you can do or think or sing um, that can keep those thoughts polished, that can keep those thoughts clean. And actually doing walking meditation, um, walking in nature, making sure that I'm not inside every day, all day, is one of the things that cleans the thoughts, that cleans the mind, that helps us to connect with that inner source uh, when we're in nature. And that inner source is everywhere. Um, it has a way of bringing that, bringing that out. And then also there's the, the chanting Baba Nam Kebalam. There's the, again, coming out of that me, 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 square, stepping out of that square and helping others. Um, you know, going outside and saying, okay, I'm going to find someone to smile to. I'm going to find someone to help. I'm going to find something to do. So sometimes negative thoughts come from just being kept in that box for just a little bit too long. We need to get out of that hamster cage 
you know, off that wheel that's going round and round and just do something, something different. And if that something different is, um, again, just uplifting somebody else, that can go, that can go a long way. So the, those are some of the things that. that uh, I... Yeah, now we were, we were just having a conversation with a group and we were talking about sometimes just a simple smile or wishing somebody a good day or saying thank you. Um, I know just even today I was walking home and there was a um, a person selling their artwork on the corner in the grass. Deep down, I knew I didn't have, you know, I wasn't going to buy anything, but I, I, but I appreciated the creative talent that she had put into her work. And so I spent, you know, a good 10 minutes just listening and talking to her about her stuff. And it was just, and I got such contentment out of it. And I could tell she had such joy of sharing what's why she had chosen what she had to create these quilts that she had created and stuff like that and so it, communication it, is so important yeah everyone, i know we've come out of covid and now they're saying we're in the next phase and everything's hunky dory well it isn't you know and a lot of people are experiencing a lot of clash so just talking to people about the weather um talking to people about whatever they're doing showing an interest in somebody we all like being acknowledged uh, when my spiritual teacher would just smile at someone they would just be all blissed out well we can do that you know we can bless other people with communication we can bless other people with smiles we can bless other people with connection that's so powerful. That exact that was being my that was kind of going to be my last question for you was, how do we spread, you know, Santosha? How do we share contentment with others? We want to be leaders. We want to, you know, be planetary leaders. We aspire to bring change. We need to learn to be content within ourselves. But how beyond, you know, the and I I think that's just that powerful smiling, taking the time to say hi to somebody. But do you have any other suggestions? I mean, you did bring up service, which I think is really important. But anything else that you would like to advise? Anything that you can do to rock somebody's boat. Anything that you can do to help somebody feel like their parade is not getting rained on today. Anything that we can do to show that we care, that we take an interest in them, that whatever comes up in our minds to say to someone, to help with someone, to talk about the weather, to talk about something uplifting. Um, anytime we connect uh, either with nature or connect with other human beings, you know, we're connecting with that divine within uh, and recognizing that divine in whoever we see and whoever we spend time and energy with. Beautiful advice. Thank you. And thank you, Majo T for joining us today. What a, like, what a, what a treat. And if, um, yeah, I think if we all had as much contentment and joy that just it kind of, um, spills out of you. So I appreciate that, that energy. Well, we have and, to grow it. We and, have to grow it. <laughs> yes. Takes a lot of time. Takes a yeah. village. <laughs> it does. It does. It does. So that's what we're hoping. But thank you again for joining us um, and really appreciate all that insight and just really uh, enjoyed the conversation today. So yeah, I did too.